This week we are driving something so massive that I don't think it would actually fit in my garage. The Jeep Grand Wagoneer, and this one is the Obsidian Edition, so it's all blacked out. I've been really excited to check out the Grand Wagoneer since I got to see the concept a couple, was that two years ago? Wow, that was a long time ago. The full-sized, full luxury Jeep Grand Wagoneer, and we've got a whole week to see what it's like to live with. Here it is, parked in the driveway. It is enormous. We have the Grand Wagoneer lettering on the back tailgate, blacked out. Massive windows. The wheels actually look kind of small on this thing. That's how big it is. I'm pretty sure, how big are these? These are 22 inch wheels. And the size of this truck make those wheels look kind of small. You can see everything is blacked out with the Obsidian appearance package. Fully black car and winter with snow and salt all over the place, so it'll be very hard to keep clean. <laughs> It's a really cool touch that they have the American flag here right behind the lettering and the flag flies in a direction as if you were driving forward. The Grand Wagoneer is designed to be the full-size luxury flagship in the Jeep lineup, sitting at the very top, uh, competing directly with something like the Cadillac Escalade and the Lincoln Navigator from the Americans. This thing is so massive, it's very American, bigger is better. Uh, we do have some German competitors too, you look at things like a BMW X7 or a Mercedes GLS. Uh, those are also massive full-size luxury SUVs, but I think this really targets directly the American Big Three. So you got the Navigator and Escalade. It's not cheap. Let's take a look at the window sticker. Here is the window sticker, and it is a hefty one. We have a 2022 Grand Wagoneer Obsidian 4x4, which has a base price starting at $94,845. So that's a almost six-figure starting price. Now, there is a regular Jeep Wagoneer, which is less expensive, but as the Grand Wagoneer Series 2, this is pricey. It is finished in diamond black crystal pearl coat exterior paint. That's a long paint name. It has the 6.4 liter V8 with an 8-speed automatic transmission, a lot of standard features, including the Uconnect 5 with 12-inch touchscreen in the middle, a lot of uh, driver assistance features too, 360 surround view camera, and then the options. We have the customer preferred package, $5,000. Brings the Obsidian appearance package, just blacks out everything, ventilated rear seats. We have the Macintosh 23 speaker sound system, 22 inch polished wheels with black insert, the front console cooler. So that's, that's in here. There is a little cooler refrigerator in here. We also have the convenience group. Uh, we have the heavy duty trailer tow and the rear seat entertainment with two 10.1 inch screens. All that adds to a as option price of $109,025. It's almost 110 grand. It's also not that efficient with a 6.4 liter V8 and obviously it's heavy. 13 MPG city, 18 highway, 15 combined. Now I realize that price is very high, but that's right in line with what the Navigator and the Escalade will cost. This is almost fully loaded. I think you can probably put on another three to $4,000 of options. So this is a very high option spec Grand Wagoneer, but an Escalade will also be over $100,000 as can a Navigator get up there. So these full size massive luxury SUVs are not intended to be cheap, but they are a practice of excessiveness. And I am very much looking forward to discovering all the luxurious features, seeing what it ride, how it rides, what it drives, like um, all the interior tech and toys and with that I'm gonna turn on my heated seat my heated steering wheel turn on a massage and we're gonna head to the office I'm gonna go ahead and pair my iPhone via Bluetooth to the Grand Wagoneer got the massage seats going already got the waterfall setting on high oh yep we have used CarPlay go ahead and we have wireless CarPlay fantastic that's good and back to the massage look at all these different settings the intensity I've got waterfall on high. Well, we'll try that first. Stuck at a railroad crossing, so I'm just driving along and I'm looking around the interior and I see this button here and I'm like, I wonder what that does. So I press it. Look at that! What? It reveals your ports. We've got an HDMI uh, passenger there and I think that one of this, this probably is a wireless charging pad. I can try that. Where's my iPhone? Let's see. Yep, wireless charging pad is there and then we just press this button again. And your seat massage control screen comes back. That's crazy! Wow! So I get to drive a lot of really cool vehicles. One of the most fun parts is bringing along friends who aren't in as many different cars and getting their impressions. So we're heading out to lunch right now, taking Josh and Victoria, and uh, obviously we're gonna take the Grand Wagoneer 
and we'll get their opinions on what this thing is like. First impressions, Victoria? Uh, it's big and I have to figure out how to move the seat. It's on the door. What? It's on the door. Whoa. Now is it on? It is on. It is on now, so you can turn on that. But from the driver's side, I can't see it. So it's actually like whatever they do to the treatment of the screen, it's not distracting to the driver. I cannot see it, but if we bring the camera over that way, yeah. now you can see it. Can see but it. from this angle, you cannot see it. Cool. We have 75 inches of combined interior screen, including the massive ones in the back. There's Josh. This is a massive, massive vehicle. Second row space is comparable to front row space and other full-size SUVs. So Josh, you'll fit comfortably. Welcome to the Jeep Grand Wagoneer Obsidian. Jesus Christ, what? What's <laughs> happening in here? Do you like all the screens? There's, why? Gosh, my butt is being massaged right now. Can I, well, how does that work? You uh, unfortunately only the front row has massage. That's some bullshit. So you can control through the 10.25 inch screen there. That is your uh, comfort display. You oh. should have heated seats, and you can adjust everything there. So you can control for the back row there. Victoria gets massage seats up front. So on the way back, we can swap. No. We've got the panoramic. <laughs> no. <laughs> We've got the panoramic sunroof open, so it lets in nice light. We've got suede headliner up here, uh, but we're hungry, so we're gonna head Ooh. off to lunch. I should have been recording this entire time just watching and hearing Josh and Victoria discover everything about the Grand Wagoneer. What are you doing right now, Josh? I'm playing with the remote controllers there. that I found in this nice little, nice little <laughs> compartment. Uh, yeah, let's turn on Netflix. We have two 10.1 inch rear entertainment screens for the second row that can be independently controlled which is why there are two remotes back there. Uh, it's got Amazon Fire TV built in, so you can actually like transfer, like if you're watching TV at home, you can transfer it over. Oh, that's how how you, much okay. does this car cost? This is, as stickered, $109,000. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a very, very expensive vehicle. Also, what's the uh, gas mileage? <laughs> um, it's rated at 13 city, 18 highway, 15 combined. I'm currently averaging 14 MPG. It does have cylinder deactivation where it will go into four cylinder mode to marginally help. It weighs almost 6,400 pounds. It has a 6.4 liter V8 that makes 471 horsepower. So no, fuel economy is not good. Yeah, like Victoria, it's what is your- Better than I thought it was gonna be though. What does your Camry get for fuel economy? Like 55. MPG? Yeah, it's a hybrid. So that's literally like four times better than this. Yeah, it's also like <laughs> 10 times smaller. Yeah, it is also. So, and cheaper. <laughs> yes. We do have quite a few driver assistance features on this Grand Wagoneer, one of which is the lane keeping. You can see the green lights to the left and right, and then the little symbol there. So it's got steering, it's got adaptive cruise and lane keeping. So as I hit the brakes, it will cancel it as I am uh, approaching my destination. I think this is the first time I'm showing the interior at night. You can see the ambient lighting. We have the upper and the lower zone, but there's only a couple limited colors. I think it's like five or six different colors you can pick. So it's not an unlimited full color wheel choice. The giant screens just everywhere. <laughs> this and the Escalade certainly are just gunning it out with each other on who can have the most amount of screen real estate inside their vehicles. We've arrived back home, so just rotary transmission dial and to park we go here we've got the toggles for the drive modes and then on this side we have the adjustable height air suspension so since I put it in park we will leave this dropping down into entry exit actually whoa that's metal that's a metal surround that's that's quite nice the uh, the volume rotary knob here that's also got this knurled metal surround to it so I, I think the material quality in this Grand Wagoneer rivals anything from Land Rover, the German luxury brands. It's really nice. I'll show it more in the daytime, but the materials are definitely fantastic. And here we have the two-spoke steering wheel. Oh, it's really dark. I'll show more of this tomorrow. But we can show you the massage seats. I just, I'm a sucker for massage seats. I love them. And look at when you change the different modes. Look at the animation. Like, that's so cool. Lower back, rock climb. When you say goodbye to the Grand Wagoneer, we get the uh, closing sequence on that central screen and it fades out. Actually, since I'm out here, I might as well show the uh, welcome sequence at night. 
That's pretty cool. This is like a small touch, but like it's cool. See when you pull that, it like the door handle like has a dampened release. This is such a random detail. Maybe I'm just sleep deprived at night talking about it, but it's nice. The cold start on this 6.4 liter V8 sounds pretty good. It's got a nice rumble to it. There's this thing called Relax, which I believe takes over all the screens and you can set it to different settings. Does it play sounds? Relaxing. So we turned the passenger screen on too. It's got, which one is the set on right now? Topographic? Let's do Aurora. Whoa. That's pretty cool. Including the passenger. What are the, is it doing on the back screens? No, I don't see it on the back screen. Got aquarium. Will it actually have fish? No. That would be cool though. Fireplace. There we go. This is, yeah, this is nice. This is very cool. <laughs> this is the definition of luxury. It's totally unnecessary, but it is fantastic. The fireplace on the screens, heated massage seats going for the front seats, and <laughs> Alex is falling asleep now because this is just that nice. Uh, this is nicer than my house. I'm just gonna stay in here for the rest of the night. The Grand Wagoneer certainly does luxury quite well cup holders here we got a little slot here you can put a phone that fits nicely if you don't want to put it underneath there for your wireless charging pad and then this is where the refrigerator is which is just filled up stuff right now but that's option as a refrigerator this opens up for more storage and charging ports in there too let's uh let's hop in the second row and check that out quickly getting into the third row is pretty simple you just press this button right up here second row seat slides forward out of the way got enough space here to crawl into the third row and even this look at that that's soft leather charging ports here what does this do oh the third row will recline slightly too oh that's wow okay i did not expect that more air vents there charging ports another cup holder put the headrest up there so this actually the second row seat in a pretty good location i have leg room in this third row what in the world that's rare, and I have headroom too. All right, I'm impressed. Look at that, this is a third row seat, and I have headroom, and I'm six foot three, and I have legroom, and I've got pretty long legs. That's, all right. The middle seat, I wouldn't want to sit in this one, but okay, the outboard seats aren't bad, and we've got gigantic windows here. So it doesn't feel like really claustrophobic at all. This third row seat is quite nice. Hopping up into the second row seats, got those two 10 inch screens and then the rear comfort screen which controls your uh, climate. Okay, let's turn on the heated passenger seat. There we go. Got more Macintosh speakers back here. So here is one of the screens which is kind of low if you're a tall adult sitting here. This is kind of like middle of my stomach. Remotes are in here. This is a massive center console, or rear center console. That's huge! Holy crap. So we've got the remotes. <laughs> and then you can see into the front row, there's that passenger screen, which you can either show audio, video, HDMI in, the center screens, Uconnect, and then the full digital cluster. Wow. And that wraps up my week with the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. It is just so, so nice. It's It checks all the boxes that you want a full-size luxury SUV to check. It really brings such a great amount of technology, luxury, and then those extra over-the-top features that you don't really need, but make up the whole 100,000 plus luxury experience. Make sure you guys also check out the full review. This thing brings the competition to the Escalade and a the Navigator. There are some aspects that I'd like to Escalade a little bit more, but other aspects I think the Jeep Grand Wagoneer are even better. So the full review is out. I will be spending some time with a regular Wagoneer 2 to see how that compares. Hope you guys enjoyed this living with vlog. Thanks for watching.